Neighbors call it a dangerous intersection, one where this little boy was nearly killed riding his bike. The city of Fairway has made permanent changes, and tonight, for the first time, we're hearing from that boy and his mom. 41 Action News reporter Ariel Rothfield joins us live from the intersection of Reinhardt, Howe, and West 57th Terrace. Ariel? Well, Dia, in this neighborhood, there are no sidewalks, but drivers might notice something new. These stop signs at the intersection, they're there to hopefully provide clarity and prevent another accident, which almost killed an 11-year-old boy you're about to meet. In the last two months, a lot has changed for 11-year-old Carter Wright. When I was in the hospital, I couldn't really walk. My balance was bad. For the first time Thursday, he returned to this intersection where he last remembers riding his bike with a friend. I was coming down uh, that street and I was going down where that stop sign was and then the car was coming down that and I didn't see it. And that's how I remember. His mom, Sarah, remembers more. We heard the sirens. Um, my friend and I looked at each other and we thought, oh, gosh, I hope everybody's OK. But Carter wasn't. A car collided with him, mangling his bike and throwing him across the street. Carter was rushed to the hospital where he suffered three brain bleeds and had a fractured skull. And this intersection is a big curveball. It was a problem for quite a while. Following the accident and a report by 41 Action News, that intersection, Reinhardt and Howe drives in Fairway. The city ordered a study by an engineering firm and made changes to the intersection, removing taller bushes from the island, adding these stop signs, and painting yellow lines along the street to better show the traffic flow. Crews also replaced this yield sign with a stop sign on Howe Drive. I'm very pleased that the city stepped up and did something about the intersection. It's too bad that it almost cost my son's life. The city manager anticipates these changes will be permanent. But while the work is done on this stretch of road, the road to recovery for Carter is only just beginning. I'm still actually um, like in the hospital, but I've just been trying to work hard. He's still not back at school because his days are filled with therapy. We work on balance and stuff. Uh, we do occupational therapy, speech, and sometimes school. But the most challenging part is his traumatic brain injury and the extent of that injury, which remains unknown. We're just really not sure where this is taking us. It's um, day to day, it's week to week. Um, we have step forwards, we have step back, and you just take it day by day. But as far as the city moving forward, we're pleased with that. You know, the next is, you know, we're still working on Carter. And this is Carter's journey. And that journey is going to be an extremely expensive one. Carter still needs tutoring and therapy that is not covered by insurance. So his friends have set up a GoFundMe account. You can find a link to that page on our website, KSHB.com. Reporting live tonight, Ariel Rothfield, 41 Action News. Ariel, thanks for that report tonight. At the time of that accident, Carter was wearing a helmet. His mom believes it helped save his life. Neither Kansas nor Missouri require cyclists to wear helmets.